you want to find the volume of the solid obtained by rotating about the x-axis the region under the curve y equals x raised to the power of one-third from zero to five. You first slice through the rotated solid at a generic point x and get a circular cross-section. What is the area of the circular cross-section? So first we're considering the function y equals x raised to the power of one-third over the closed interval from zero to five. So this piece of the graph, we rotate this about the x-axis here and it produces a solid that looks similar to this. Then we take one slice of the solid and our first question is what would be the area of this one slice? Notice how this slice would be a circle and the area for a circle is equal to a equals pi r squared. So the next question is what would the radius be of our circle which is one slice of our solid? So this length here, which should be the radius, would be equal to the function value y equals x raised to the power of one-third. So this length is x raised to the power of one-third, which means the area of our circle, or the area of one slice, would be area equals pi times x raised to the power of one-third squared. And here we have powers to powers, so we multiply the exponents. So the area of the circle, or one slice, is pi times x raised to the power of one-third times two, which is two-thirds. So the area of one slice, or one cross-section, is a of x equals pi times x raised to the power of two-thirds. This makes the volume of the approximating disk with thickness delta x equal to which expression? So now we want to find the volume of one approximating disk with thickness delta x. So this would be the picture of one approximating disk. Notice how the thickness of the disk would be delta x, and this disk is a right circular cylinder. Again, where we know the radius is equal to x to the power of one-third, and the thickness, or the height, would be delta x. So the volume of a right circular cylinder is v equals pi r squared h, which means the volume of one approximating disk would be v equals, we already know pi r squared is pi times x to the two-thirds, and the height is delta x. So here's our formula for the volume of one approximating disk. So going back to our question, notice how delta x is already here, so the volume of the disk is equal to pi times x raised to the power of two-thirds times delta x, which again is already here. Now we're going to let delta x the thickness of each disk approach to zero, and the sum of the volumes of the infinitely many disks that approximate the solid of revolution. So the final question is, what total volume do we get? Well, the volume is going to be equal to the integral of a of x, the area of one cross-section, integrated with respect to x from zero to five. But you'll also often see the volume for the disk method rotated about the x-axis using this formula here, with the volume equals pi times the integral of r of x squared, integrated with respect to x from a to b, but notice how pi times r of x squared is the same as a of x. So to find the volume of revolution, regardless of which formula we use, we want to evaluate this integral here. So the volume is equal to pi times the integral of x to the power of two-thirds, integrate with respect to x from zero to five. So we want to find the antiderivative of x raised to the power of two-thirds. That'd be x raised to the power of two-thirds plus one or two-thirds plus three-thirds, that's five-thirds, divided by five-thirds. We're integrating from zero to five. Dividing by five-thirds is the same as multiplying by three-fifths. So let's write this as three-fifths pi times, then we'd have x to the five-thirds. Our limits of integration are from zero to five. So we have three-fifths pi times, when x is five, we have five to the five-thirds, minus, when x is zero, we have zero to the five-thirds. So well, zero to the five-thirds is zero, so this simplifies to three-fifths pi times five raised to the power of five-thirds. So this does give us the exact volume of our solid, but this does simplify. Let's write this as 
3 times 5 to the 5 thirds over 5 times pi. And notice here, because the bases are the same, and we have 5 to the first in the denominator, we can subtract the exponents. 5 thirds minus 1, or 5 thirds minus 3 thirds, would be 2 thirds. So simplified, it would be 3 times 5 to the 2 thirds times pi. I know for our homework, this answer is acceptable but this would be more simplified. And let's also get a decimal approximation. We have three times five raised to the power of two-thirds, a right arrow, and then pi, which is second exponent or a second caret, and enter. So to four decimal places, the volume would be approximately 27.5582 cubic units. Going back to our question though, it does not say to round, so we'll go and enter the simplified value of three times five raised to the power of two thirds times pi. If you click the preview button, it will show you the decimal approximation. It's always a good idea to use the preview button. I hope you found this helpful.